Question 1. What is a JSP and what is it used for? Answer. Java Server Pages JSP, is a platform-independent presentation layer technology that comes with Sun SJ2EE platform. JSPs are normal HTML pages with Java code pieces embedded in them. JSP pages are saved to asterisk.jsp files. A JSP compiler is used in the background to generate a servlet from the JSP page. Question 2. What is JSP technology? Answer. Java Server Page is a standard Java extension that is defined on top of the servlet extensions. The goal of JSP is the simplified creation and management of dynamic web pages. JSPs are secure, platform independent, and best of all, make use of Java as a server-side scripting language. Question 3. What is JSP page? Answer. A JSP page is a text-based document that contains two types of text, static template data, which can be expressed in any text-based format such as HTML, SVG, WML, and XML, and JSP elements, which construct dynamic content. Question 4. What are the implicit objects? Answer. Implicit objects are objects that are created by the web container and contain information related to a particular request, page, or application. They are request, response, page context, session, application, out, config, page, exception. Question 5. How many JSP scripting elements and what are they? Answer. There are three scripting language elements, declarations, scriptlet, expressions. Question 6. Why are JSP pages the preferred API for creating a web-based client program? Answer. Because no plugins or security policy files are needed on the client systems, Applet does. Also, JSP pages enable cleaner and more module application design because they provide a way to separate applications programming from web page design. This means personnel involved in web page design do not need to understand Java programming language syntax to do their jobs. Question 7. Is JSP technology extensible? Answer. Yes. JSP technology is extensible through the development of custom actions, or tags, which are encapsulated in tag libraries. Question 8. Can we use the constructor, instead of init, to initialize servlet? Answer. Yes, of course you can use the constructor instead of init. There's nothing to stop you, but you shouldn't. The original reason for init, was that ancient versions of Java couldn't dynamically invoke constructors with arguments, so there was no way to give the constructor a servlet config. That no longer applies, but servlet containers still will only call your noarg constructor, so you won't have access to a servlet config or servlet servlet context. Question 9. What class, forename will do while loading drivers? Answer. It is used to create an instance of a driver and register it with the driver manager. When you have loaded a driver, it is available for making a connection with a DBMS. Question 10. In the servlet 2.4 specification single thread model has been deprecated. Why? Answer. Because it is not practical to have such model. Whether you set is thread safe to true or false, you should take care of concurrent client requests to the JSP page by synchronizing access to any shared objects defined at the page level. Question 11. How do I include static files within a JSP page? Answer. Static resources should always be included using the JSP include directive. This way, the inclusion is performed just once during the translation phase. Do note that you should always supply a relative URL for the file attribute. Although you can also include static resources using the action, this is not advisable as the inclusion is then performed for each and every request. Question 12. How do I prevent the output of my JSP or servlet pages from being cached by the browser? Answer. You will need to set the appropriate HTTP header attributes to prevent the dynamic content output by the JSP page from being cached by the browser. Just execute the following scriptlet at the beginning of your JSP pages to prevent them from being cached at the browser. You need both the statements to take care of some of the older browser versions. 
Question 13. What JSP life cycle methods can I override? Answer. You cannot override the underscore JSP service method within a JSP page. You can however, override the JSPNEAT and JSP destroy methods within a JSP page. JSPNEAT can be useful for allocating resources like database connections, network connections, and so forth for the JSP page. It is good programming practice to free any allocated resources within JSP destroy. The JSPNEAT and JSP JSP destroy methods are each executed just once during the life cycle of a JSP page and are typically declared as JSP declarations. Question 14. How do I perform browser redirection from a JSP page? Answer. You can use the response implicit object to redirect the browser to a different resource, as, response, send redirect. You can also physically alter the location HTTP header attribute, as shown below. You can also use the Also note that you can only use this before any output has been sent to the client. I believe this is the case with the response, send redirect, method as well. If you want to pass any parameters then you can pass using Question 15. How does JSP handle runtime exceptions? Answer. You can use the error page attribute of the page directive to have uncaught runtime exceptions automatically forwarded to an error processing page. For example, redirects the browser to the JSP page error.jsp if an uncaught exception is encountered during request processing. Within error.jsp, if you indicate that it is an error processing page, via the directive, the throwable object describing the exception may be accessed within the error page via the exception implicit object.